Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Alex. I'm super excited to be at BaselCon. Back in person, it's been really rough the last couple of years. I miss seeing all of you. Uh, I can almost see all of you. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what my company has been working on. Um, so basically, there's three constituencies I'm going to talk about. Uh, our goal is to make Bazel be supported and to make it possible for all engineers to be able to ship their software to production using all the guarantees that we love from Bazel, make it uh, easier for them to do that. Uh, and and those, the three constituencies are um, we have a, uh, a product uh, that's really a, a platform for running Bazel, which is at aspect.build. Um, and I would say that that's most usable um, by, by developer infrastructure teams. Um, and so that's most of you, so that's where I'm going to spend most of my time. Um, we also offer professional services for Bazel, consulting, and um, that's at aspect.dev. Mostly that's going to be your, your, your managers, like your directors of engineering productivity. Um, and then uh, we also have open source software, and that's going to be used mostly by your end users, people who are product engineers, and they're using Bazel. So I'm going to step into the, a couple of those. Um, so if you don't know me already, I've been around Bazel for a long time. Um, I basically got obsessed with it when I joined Google. Um, my starter project was to add source jars um, so that we could do the static analysis thing, and I got to go meet the team in the office, and, and, and uh, I've been obsessed with it ever since, really. Um, you can follow me on, on our blog at Aspect. That's where I do um, most of my interesting thinking. Um, uh, for example, there's a post there about which .bazel RC flags you're going to want. Most of us have tried to pick exactly the right set. It's pretty challenging. Um, so uh, yeah, so I, I'm going to start with, um, with, with helping, helping individual engineers use Bazel. Um, and so for this purpose, uh, we have a few things. We've, we've written our own rule sets, um, which you can find under our GitHub aspect, up, aspect build. Um, Rules.js is a great example of that. So this is, um, uh, I gave a couple of talks about this in the spring, so you can go find those if you're interested. Um, and on top of JavaScript, there's a bunch of other tools that you may need, and so we have rule sets for all of those as well. Um, we have a, a repo with a lot of Bazel examples. Uh, we try to update that whenever we write a blog post. Here's an example of what we're talking about. Um, and uh, we often add to that set of examples when, when people need that. Um, and if you haven't seen our doc site, uh, as mentioned in the keynote, it's really awesome that Bazel Core has spent a lot of time working on documentation. That doesn't cover all of the rule sets, and so that's where we've tried to pick up. And so docs.aspect.build gives you a nice way to see um, all of the rules that are available. Here's what it looks like. Um, you can search across all of the rules. Uh, there's even like copy-paste snippets for them. Um, and so I use this all the time. When somebody asks me a question about a rule, I just go here and search and send them the link. So it's all permalinks to every individual attribute um, the way you'd like it to be. So those are all useful things for Bazel end users. Most of you are, are too expert for that. So I'm going to move on. Um, so let's talk about what things you actually need Bazel to do. Um, when you're a developer experience team, you need to roll things out for your end users. And Bazel is hard for them to adopt. So we've got two things I want to talk about today um, that make that a lot, a lot easier. One of them is our CLI, and the other one is workflows, which is basically how to hook things into, C, into the, the CI system. Um, OK, so, um, so starting with the CLI, um, Bazel, of course, comes with a CLI. Uh, and you know, um, it's, it's, the, it's the end user experience that most of your engineers are using all the time. And I think the core observation that I've had about the Bazel CLI is that it was really developed with Google 3 in mind. So like, why does it not have a lint verb? Well, there's tricorder for that at Google, so not needed. Um, why does it not have a deploy verb? Well, everybody uses board config for that. Um, and in cases where Google did need something to be built into the tool, they were able to do that. And that's and like I think those things are are, are few and far between because there's so many systems at Google have grown up around Bazel over time. Um, so what our CLI does is it allows you to have the control to roll out Bazel into your organization in a way that makes sense for your workflow. Um, so that it so if your developers expect something to happen, you can actually bake that all the way into the CLI for Bazel and not have to rely on some sort of out-of-band patching where you're going to you know, intercept error messages later or tell people, like, here, here's a make file that you can use to, to run Bazel commands. Um, I'm curious, how many people are, already have some sort of a wrapper that they use, like their company? Like, you don't run Bazel directly, run the wrapper 
I see maybe a quarter of the people, which is less than I expected. But you don't, you shouldn't want to write a wrapper, right? Like this is a, like, you know, Gradle has Gradle W. I've heard of companies that have Bazel W just because they needed to check that you have the right things on your machine at the time that the, that Bazel runs. Um, so this is, uh, so it's open source. You can basically think of it like Bazelisk, right? Bazelisk is the tool, tool most people use to wrap Bazel and fetch the right version. So we started from Bazelisk and then we added a ton of stuff. In particular, the most important thing we added is that you can write plugins for this thing. And plugins, we used the, uh, the Go plugin mechanism that HashiCorp open sourced, which is the thing inside of the Terraform CLI. Um, and it, it basically, your, your plugin is any program in any language that speaks a certain gRPC server protocol. So it starts a server and then the CLI can communicate with it. Um, if you want to write a simple plugin, uh, there's a URL here. You can find all these links in the slides later, I hope. Um, and so this, this plugin template is just a single Go file that lets you plug into something in Bazel. And there's a great example. Wasn't able to show it as part of the slides today, but um, if, you, if you look for this fixed visibility, so this is just an example of what we came up with that we can do with plugin system. When we see Bazel print a message saying, oh, the, your target doesn't have visibility on this other target, we can be, go interactive, we can prompt the user, would you like to fix it? We have Buildozer linked into the CLI, and then we can just make the edit to the file, and now the user just runs the command again. So it's like, think of it like you can do all kinds of dash dash fix behaviors, a lot of them specific to your organization. Um, we also have a pro version um, because we need to be able to pay uh, salaries to our engineers. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is aspect workflows. Um, so running Bazel on CI is hard, and the fundamental observation here is that all CI systems that you're used to are built around the idea that the tool that you're running is incorrect and doesn't benefit from incrementality. And so the best thing to do is to always have an ephemeral, cold you know, runner come up, or a, a container maybe if you're under Kubernetes, that's gonna um, do the build and then be completely destroyed to prevent uh, test isolation failures. And that's the opposite of what you want with Bazel. And so um, you know, Sun had a great blog post a couple of weeks ago sort of explaining some of the techniques that you need to do to make Bazel be fast, to have always warm runners ready to go. Um, and, um, and so what we've tried to do is make that thing a product, you just, it's a turnkey thing, right? So if you're using any one of those CI systems, you don't have to change CI systems, they all have a self-hosted runners option, which they had to add in order so that you could do your runners on premises uh, or in your own VPC. Um, so we just plug into that API. So we uh, basically like a bunch of Terraform and some applications that, you, that's, that spin up in your environment or we can host it. Um, that gives you that, that really great experience. And it also includes all of the things that you're going to need, like not only remote cache and, you know, um, uh, but, but things like continuous delivery uh, or test selection um, that are just not built into Bazel at all, but these are things, ingredients that you're going to need to make CI be successful. Um, and uh, we, in the same way that you can use your existing CI system, there's no reason you also can't use uh, one of the RBE vendors. We've been working with Engflow, they're great. If you want to use an OSS one like Build Barn, also an option. Um, so uh, I would love to show more demos, but I only have uh, a couple of minutes left. Let me just show one thing. Um, this is uh, what it looks like in BuildKite, um, which I, I think is an excellent CI choice for Bazel, and the Bazel team themselves uses it, and you can find talks um, from other conferences, including the BuildKite conference, where there was a Bazel talk. Um, so this is, this is what we generate. So you could basically have a one-line configuration file for aspect workflows, and we figure out, okay, you're gonna need to use Buildifier and Gazelle, and you gotta break up the tests, and we make sure that it's fast, and we make sure that it runs in two minutes, and if it's not incremental for some reason, that's really our fault. Um, but more interestingly, what does it look like if something fails? Well, BuildKite has this, uh, this mechanism, and this is really tying it all together. Um, in order to show the failure right here on the CI screen without making you click through to some other Bazel specific like, results viewer, like what your, what your end user wants, your product engineer, they just wanna see the failure here like they did with their old build tool. And if you can just show them this, then they go back on their way. They don't need to click through to some diagnostics uh, UI that only uh, you know, somebody who loves the, the build event protocol could really appreciate. Um, and the way we do this is with a plug into the CLI. So our CLI sees that there's a, can, can read the build event protocol. It's one of the, 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 the things that comes across the gRPC protocol that the, the plugins speak. And so when we see build events, we can capture things like, um, um, like the delta that Gazelle wanted, and then we can present it here so that users see run, Bazel run Gazelle, right? So really this closes the loop for developers so that they're not gonna come ask you questions. Um, it's very clear, like, once the CI system is up and running, not only is it fast, but it's, uh, it's helping your end users to, to adopt Bazel. So, 
Um, yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's all the time I had for today. Please come find me at the conference. I'm happy to talk about all of these things in much more detail, show you demos. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. I don't need that. Oh, got my mic's on. Um, I'm kind of bummed Alex went this late because this whole notion of wanting to, to touch the uh, basal heart gives me Blarney Stone vibes, and I really wish I had set a precedent of the speakers come out and kiss the, the heart. So anyone who wants to do that as well speaking, that'd be incredible. A um, couple of announcements, and I know I'm standing between you and food, and that's never a good place to be. Uh, first off, everyone has noticed, uh, I meant to say this in the opening, there is a ton of space around the venue. Um, between talks, the breaks have gotten to run a little bit long because we've had some spare time. There have been some awesome pickup conversations. They're impromptu office hours. Uh, I saw Yoon and Shadong have a big group around them. I'm assuming it was something BZL mod, but I didn't look too closely. Feel free to use that space. Um, one of the benefits of actually being in person again is the networking, is the ability to have conversations that are not over yet another video call. So use the space uh, available for all of you. Um, second item, the feedback survey. Uh, I'm going to remind you about this pretty much every time you see me. Um, I can't stress enough how valuable this is to the Google team. I'm getting choked by my microphone. I can't stress enough how important this is. We need to be able to hear from you on what's working, what's not working. This is a great avenue for it. Shouldn't be more than a couple of minutes. Take a screenshot of that confirmation, get your t-shirt, it looks like this. Um, but again, it's, it's, the t-shirt's cool, but it's the important part of the actual uh, feedback. Number three, the DEI lunch. Uh, so that will be going on today during the uh, actual lunch itself. You'll grab food from the catering. Uh, I would walk past it, it smells fantastic. Um, and then bring it in there, uh, first come, first serve, but there's a fair amount of seats, not just tables, but um, standing room, uh, some seats along the edges. Uh, I encourage everyone to check it out. Um, having representation for underrepresented genders, uh, having this opportunity is absolutely huge to me. Um, and I really hope everyone takes advantage of it. Um, happy hour tonight. Reminder about that. Uh, if you go on the website under the resources section, you will find the sign up for that. Please sign up so we have an idea of how many people we're going to have. And lastly, uh, you will notice that we have started putting out extra swag. Uh, there are some stickers from companies. Engflow has provided a bunch of t-shirts. They look kind of like this. I, I, that, you know that went to an Engflow engineer, knowing my luck. Um, grab those uh, as you want. Those don't have any kind of uh, restriction in front of them. And I specifically want to highlight that Engflow provided a, a number of these tumbler cups. Now, I saw this, and, and Helen came up to me yesterday. She's like, you got to take swag. And I was like, no, no, my wife's going to kill me if I come home with yet another cup. And she's like, but there's chocolate inside. And I have one now. And the chocolates in particular, she asked her engineers, and there are uh, eight different pieces in there from a variety of countries for each engineer who picked their favorite childhood candy. So a really, really clever idea. Um, really cool to get access to some things you're not normally going to get access to. Um, which is to say my kids are going to claim them as soon as I get home, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, really nice tumbler. I'm not going to throw it. <laughs> I'm not making my first conference the lawsuit conference. <laughs> Maybe next year. Uh, we have lunch uh, coming up now. I believe it goes till 1.30. Keep an ear out for the announcements and head back in. Um, we have a packed afternoon for you as well. We have more talks in here. We have quite a few birds of feather sessions going on, quite a few office hours, and then we end the day with... Um, a marathon of lightning talks, which I'm really, really excited about. So I will shut up and let everyone eat. Thank you for the morning. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and I will see you at the close.